Hi, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you watch this. My name is Latrice Bartley and I am here to encourage you in the Lord. It is Mindset Monday. Listen, I am so excited about this word of encouragement. I first want to say um, happy Labor Day. I'm sure that some of you are still going to watch this, right? With your hot dog, with your nachos, with whatever you're eating. But we still got to prioritize the word of God. So while you're relaxing and I pray and join your family like I will be, um, I just want to encourage you. I want to start off by just reminding you that for the next couple of weeks, probably more like a month or two, Mindset Monday will be pre-recorded, so no live. Those of you that listen to me on a podcast, you'll get it the same way. Um, others that watch it live, you can head over to the YouTube channel, Purposely Living with Latrice Bartley, because I will not be on social media, just really still in the way. And um, y'all know I do that sometimes, and it's, it's for a good uh, reason. I believe when I come back, I'm refreshed in the spirit. I can hear. Um, I'm working on a couple of things, and so I just really feel God pulling me in, right? So again, you will not see the live. This will be pre-recorded, and I will have it uploaded to the YouTube channel, all right? So listen, I just want to jump right on in. I always like to just say a little bit, if you happen to follow on this video, two years from now, three years from now, who am I? I already introduced myself, and guess what? I love the Lord with all my heart. I'm here to encourage you in your word, in his word, because I believe the word of God is our manual. It is um, our, it is how we navigate the times. It is the truth, the truth, period. You want the truth? Go to the word of God. So I'm going to jump right in because I have a lot to say and I want to get through this message, y'all. Today's Mindset Monday um, was actually inspired by my godmother. We were on a uh, prayer call that we had and everybody was just contributing, and encouraging each other. And she said something and I couldn't shake it. And so much was ignited in me because like I was sharing with her, this is one of, I know I say it's one of my favorite topics. Everything felt like it's one of my favorite topics, but this is something that I know firsthand what it means to get the victory. And I'm still walking with the Lord to keep victory in this area. But she just, in a sharing, she said this sentence, posture of peace, free from disturbance. Now, I ain't gonna tell you what she said because I'm gonna tell you what the Lord told me to tell you. But that thing began to, so much was rumbling because I knew the definition of peace very well and disturbance is in there. So I was, I was just eating as she was giving and I just have not been able to shake that. And so I want to encourage you today because I decree and declare that you will, like me, walk in a posture of peace free from disturbance. Listen, I'm getting ready to start homeschool on Tuesday. Y'all, it's a different feeling. I'm so excited. And I've just been resting because the I, what I know is it's not about me. I can't make them successful. I can't give them purpose. So listen, half of the load is off of me. God, Ephesians 2 and 10 reminds me that they are his workmanship created in him for good works that he already predestined. He already got a package deal for Langston Miles and Olivia. My job is to train them up, to remind them, to seek him for their abilities, to seek his wisdom for their talents and for where they're going. So y'all, I'm walking into homeschool excited. I'm like, come on, Jesus, what you going to do? What we going to do? Because I recognize where is I used to be like, oh God, oh God, the curriculum, oh God. I, I'm like, no, Lord, I'm listening because I understand that posture of peace. So I'm going to dig right in. This is where I want to encourage you. So y'all know me, just bear with me. I'm a teacher at heart, okay? When I say a posture of peace, free from disturbance, that's what we are going to live. But we need to define these things to really understand, okay? Posture means the way one holds their body, right? The way a person behaves um, is also a place someone is in, a particular position or pose. Um, if you had my mama, she did not like to see us slumped over. Even if we were sitting, she would say, square your shoulders back. Your posture right? Says something. If you walk up to somebody and they just, you're like, well, what's wrong? It make you act, ask that because of just how they're standing, right? So then our next definition, peace. Peace, when you look it up, 
in the dictionary um, says free from disturbance. That's where I'm going. It had a lot of stuff, but y'all know that's where I'm going. But I also want to bring out when we're talking about peace, that's a supernatural experience. Okay. And we're going to dig into that a little bit. Disturbance. You can't talk about peace and then talk about what peace is not because it's, I say a posture of peace free from disturbance. Disturbance can be defined as noise, commotion, a worried mental state. So I am decreeing and declaring y'all that I, and you have to say it for yourself, will walk and live in a posture of peace, free, right? From a worried mental state, free from the noise of culture and society and the things that are going on. And as I mentioned, when we talk about peace, we must address immediately. This is a supernatural experience. You know, it, it's supernatural. You, you can't understand this in the mind. When you going through hell, but yet you can smile. When war is waging all around you, but it's like, in it, you still have hope. What you see is not all you see. That's a supernatural experience. Some scriptures on peace that I want to bring out is I like this and I want to give this particular version because my son watches my Mindset Mondays. Isn't that encouraging? And so I love the International Children's Bible because it makes it a little bit plain, all right? So this is from a Langston. But it says, and God's peace will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace that God gives is so great that we can't understand it supernatural. But here's a definition, or I'm sorry, a scripture we're familiar with, amplify. And it says, and the peace of God, that peace, which reassures the heart, that peace, which transcends all understanding, that peace, which stands guard, guard, hear that, over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, is yours. Come on. I want to see that last part again. It says that peace, which stands guard. That word is going to be important in a little bit over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. So as I mentioned, God's peace is beyond understanding. It is being content in every state. When we have our earthly lot, it might be some things that we like, Lord, we didn't ask for this, but yet we can walk through that situation with peace. It also says that God's peace will guard. When you think about guard, it's protecting something, right? Our hearts and minds as we do something. Live in Christ Jesus. We have a part to this peace. It's a supernatural experience, but we will realize it as we do something. We have to live in him, okay? We know, y'all, that we are in perilous times. Listen, I'm not going to even go there. That's a whole nother message. We are in perilous times, dealing with life, looking at the news, just raising children, just life responsibilities outside of the Lord. I'm just being honest, showing up to your life. Listen, you need peace, okay? It's just a lot. Sometimes just the things that we're balancing, whether the husband's providing and being a father in this time, being a black man in this time, mothers trying to navigate the homes and y'all life is just life, right? But here's the thing. It reminds us that everything in this world postures us to unrest. If you look at the news consistently, God bless you. I don't even know. Thank God for my mama and my husband because they kind of keep me on track. I'd be like, is a hurricane coming? What? <laughs> my mama like, girl. So I literally had to put the little thing on there because y'all, I don't watch the news. I don't. And I will, you know, make sure I look at my um, Wall Street or some different things to just get the worldview news for, get the high level. But even that is not an everyday thing. Because you just got to guard. It's, I mean, it's enough that you see one thing and you like, why they threw their baby in the toilet and killed them? I mean, just people doing stuff, right? So here's the thing. Culture, the news, everything around us will posture us for unrest. But the Bible says in 1 Chronicles 12 and 32, we must be like the tribe of Issachar. What do I mean by that? They were men and women who understood. We must be men and women that understand the times. That's going to be key. Stay with me. We must understand the times. This scripture is so important. Romans 13, 
chapter 13, 11 through 14 in the New Living Translation. It says, this is all the more urgent for you to know how late it is. Listen, time is running out. This is the word. Wake up. Hear me. Wake up. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believe the night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living, right living, because we belong to the day. We must live decent lives for all to see. Listen, in other words, he said, it's time out. Come on. I'm going to keep telling you what he said, but he said, it's time to live. Christ is coming back. If y'all don't know that we're in the last days, we are there. And so he says, don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you want to know what I mean by clothe, go to Ephesians 6. And, and it talks about that armor that you're supposed to be putting on daily, not once a month, every day. So it says, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. This ain't the time. Like you need to be focused. You need to be alert to know that the enemy is roaming. He know his time is up, right? And I love this scripture because when we're talking about that, it said, listen, this ain't the time to be getting caught up. This is not the time to be trying to live as close as you can to the edge. Give me a little bit of Jesus. No, you better get all of them. He said, get dressed in them because Ephesians 4 and 1 amplified, reminds us. And this is what Paul said. He said, I appeal to you, live a life worthy of the call to which you have been called. That is a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, and mature behavior. A life that expresses gratitude for God for your salvation. Hear me. With all humility, forsaking self-righteousness and gentleness, in other words, fruits of the Spirit, maintaining self-control, fruit of the Spirit, with patience, fruit of the Spirit, bearing with one another in unselfish love, fruit of the Spirit. In other words, something ought to be shown that you get dressed in him. And those are those fruits, y'all. So as I mentioned, we are in perilous times. We are in a spiritual war, y'all. And I'm talking about a posture of peace because I'm, I'm telling you, everything in the world says unrest, right? But here is the confidence we have. If you have given your life to the Lord, we can feel it. We can feel the disturbance. We can feel it. We're dealing with life, whether in your marriage, your children, you just feel like well, you at war, your business, things are changing, right? So we understand that what we see is not all we see. Those of us that are living for the Lord and we are on the battle, on that line, we can sense that there is a war going on. But here's what I love, y'all. I said all of that to say with all of that, you can have a posture of peace free from disturbance. I got to give you a smile on that. I'm going to tell you how. You may ask, how is that possible? Girl, just everything you said up to this point. Here is the thing. As I mentioned, peace is a supernatural experience, but we got a part to play. Like everything that Jesus does, guess what? He said, y'all going to participate. You know how you go to them class and they say, oh no, I ain't going to be talking to you all day. You going to participate. See, he does not force himself. It is an invitation to salvation. You have to make a choice to live right, to get dressed in him every day. We have to decide that nothing will disturb our peace. And I'm going to tell you the first way we do that. It is in Philippians 4, 8 through 9, a familiar scripture, right? But I want to go through it. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, and then the God of peace will be with you. Now, in another version, I love it. It says this, think continually on these things. 
center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. So your job is to center God's word, center those things that are honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable. We got to fix our mind on that. And so this is something that we have to do. And, and, and let me say this, that does not mean that we deny our situation. I love to give this example, my daughter. Many of you know the testimony that Olivia and I have, my family has, my daughter. That was a very serious situation. I was supposed to abort her. They said, listen, you need to choose your life. You can have another baby, you know, because they think they got it. But anyway, they said, listen, you're going to hemorrhage out and die. What they showed us on the, the, on the x-rays was not a lie. It was the truth. But the truth of God's word had to stand present over what I saw. In other words, it wasn't like, oh, they lying, they fibbing. No, I saw the x-rays, but I had to yet fix my mind that God said that I would live and not die, that I would be here to proclaim the works of the Lord. That truth had to take forefront over what I saw. And y'all, that is what I'm talking about today. Because even in that situation, I, I had to anchor down and I was able to have peace. Didn't mean I didn't cry. Didn't mean I didn't have some good days and bad days. Didn't mean that I wasn't uncertain about some things. But even in all that, I had to put that word down and fix my mind on that so that I could fight the good fight of faith. Okay. So here's the thing. Daniels reminds us of something. He says, those that know their God will be strong and do exploits. And y'all, that, that scripture has been ringing in this season, not because of the exploits. The key to this scripture is not what you're going to do or the strength you're going to get. Mm -mm. The, strength, the, the key in this passage is no. That's the word. It says, though that know their God. So it begins before you can get strength, before you can do the exploits, it says you have to know something, y'all. When you know the truth of God's word, then we gain strength, right? Then we can walk out things that we can walk in the deep waters with God. We can um, go through life even when things are uh, the uncertainties and obstacles and trials. We know something about our God. So here's what I love in, in Zechariah 4 and 6. Again, I love this version for Melanchthon, Inter International Children's Bible. This is what it says. This is the message from the Lord to Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel. I feel like I always say that wrong. Y'all know what I'm saying. You will not succeed by your own strength or by your own power. The power will come from my spirit, says the Lord of heavens. Listen, in Ephesians 6 and 10, it says, in conclusion... Be strong in the Lord, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. Now that sounds good, but you can't get to those scriptures until you know something. I'm still talking about posture peace because that will not happen until we have a part in cultivating that. We have to live and remain in Christ Jesus. His words have to remain and abide in us. Y'all, that is how we will have a posture of peace free from disturbance. So this in Daniel, it reminds us that when you know, when you know your God, then we will be strong. Yes. And we will be able to do great things in him. But as we keep going, y'all, when we think about walking in peace, a posture of peace, free from disturbance, we have to silence the background noise. How do we have a posture of peace when our marriage is broken? How do we have a posture of peace when we don't know when our children are? Everything we put in them, it's like they're going opposite and it's getting worse by the second. They coming home saying, I'm gay. Or maybe they just saying, screw you and daddy. You don't even know where they at. When you have given all your all you knew to your job and they tell you oh sorry here's your pink slip and we need you to train somebody before you leave and then you're fighting them for your pay like how how do you have peace in these situations how do you have peace 
When we constantly on the news seeing the state of our government, the state of our affairs, we worrying that our husbands don't get out. Lord, please don't let our sons and our husbands get out and get shot just because of the color of their skin. How do you have peace free from disturbance? I'm going to tell you another way. Here's the thing, y'all. There's one more thing that we can do that's very powerful. Now, I told you, you got to fix your mind. You can't allow your mind to be clouded with the news and just all the things. We need to be aware. We need to be alert, but we must use wisdom. But this right here is powerful, what God showed me. And this is one of my other scriptures that I've been going through. There is one more thing in Nehemiah 4. I want you to read it. It instructs us to do something. So Nehemiah is building this wall, right? We, you, If you haven't read it, read one, Nehemiah is a very powerful scripture, but he is, he is concerned about his people. They are left. Their wall is torn down. He is building a wall. So he goes back and we have the enemy in the form of Sam Ballot, Tobiah. So, so many of them, y'all, they mad. They mad at the work that Nehemiah is doing and they have determined together. I mean, when you read the scripture, it's like, is he trying to do, hold on. We're going to frustrate him. In other words, we're going to hinder his concern, the fact that he would be concerned, we're going to hinder his prog progress. But here is what Nehemiah said that I love. And I'm going to read this passage in a message version. It says, when Samballot and Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and Ashadites heard that the repairs of the walls of Jerusalem were going so well that the breaks in the wall were being fixed, they were absolutely furious. They put their heads together and decided to fight against Jerusalem and create as much trouble as they could. Does that not sound like Satan and all his imps? Uh-huh. We countered, but this is what he said. We countered with prayer to our God and set a round the clock guard, hear that term, against them. He said we set a round the clock guard. Now, just up in Philippians, it said, how do we keep? It said that the peace of God will guard our heart and mind. So here it is. Now, as we go down in 13 and 14, this is what it says. So I stationed armed guards at the most vulnerable places of the wall and assigned people by families with their swords, lances, and bows. After looking things over, I stood up and spoke to the nobles, officials, and everyone else. Don't be afraid of them. Put your minds on the master. Sound like Philippians, don't it? Fix your mind. Y'all, the first way we're going to be able to have a posture of peace, we got to fix our mind. It matters what we think on. But hear what Nehemiah said. Now he's talking naturally, right? He stationed people. But y'all, I got real happy when the Lord started showing me this. He stationed armed guards around the vulnerable places of the wall. Well, come on, y'all know. I had to look up vulnerable. What is vulnerable in your life? Well, let's look up vulnerable. Vulnerable means defined as susceptible to physical or emotional attack, in need of special care or support due to age or conditions, capable of being physically or emotionally wounded, open for attack. So again, I say, what is vulnerable in your life? Station means to assign to a specified place for a particular purpose. Listen, in Philippians 4 and 7, it said God's peace will stand guard over your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. But y'all, let's think about this practically and natural speaking, naturally speaking. When you think about the military, if you've ever went to a military base, what do they have? Guards. Listen, it ain't just because we at war. That's just Period. When you come in on the base, they got guards. They have guards before you can get in. You will walk around. You might see guards patrolling. They got guards. Good times, bad times. They have guards. They don't move off a of post. Why? Because they understand at any moment there could be an attack. Y'all, that's what we have to do in the spirit. But unlike Nehemiah, it ain't getting your family, putting them outside, putting a little gun in your child's hand. No, 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 no. We got something more powerful. We have to station God's word at the vulnerable places. Come on, y'all. We have to frame our world by the word of God. No matter what, the truth of God must be our foundation. Did you know 
Again, what is the vulnerable places in your life? What right now could the enemy attack? What right now is he trying to wound or kill you with? Did you know that God's word is insurance? God's word is protective. God's word is living, active, full of power. But listen, this is what the scripture says, sharper than any two-edged sword. Well, what do we use a sword for? To fight. Y'all, come on. So we ain't got to go get guns. It says station. It might not be bad to be packing, but you know what I mean. It says station the word of God. I'm telling you, station the word of God at your vulnerable places. Y'all, guards are there to protect the borders, the people on the inside. But the word of God can do the same thing. Listen, Psalms, uh, you might say, Latrice, give me an example. I hear what you're saying. So maybe you're struggling, right? Maybe you're struggling with an addiction. Maybe you're struggling with your flesh. You can't seem to stop shacking. You're, you're dealing with some porn or maybe just the, the culture. You, you, you find yourself in and out. You, okay, so you're open for attack is what it sounds like because you got to walk according to this word. But here's what it, Psalms 119 and 9 says. It says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to the word. You got to get in that word and begin to obey what it says. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. So you got to station that word and begin to say, okay, who around me? Am I hanging with Bob, Joe, and them? And I know they not saved. Is my best friend a sinner? And then I'm trying to figure out why I'm always slipping. Come on, we got to state. That's a vulnerable place. The enemy know you're weak there. You got to put the word of God there and then say, I got to obey. Because he said, I will give you peace. You will have peace as you live in me. You got to put on Jesus. You got to put on this word and say, I'm going to walk this thing out. Here's another one. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14 reminds us, do not be unequally bound together with unbelievers. Do not make mismatch alliances with them inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership can righteousness have with lawlessness? Now, I know we get mad about this. So what they're trying to say, I can't. Hey, hear me. Even in your friendships, you can be unequally yoked. Your best friend can't be a sinner. How can y'all talk every day, hang out every day, eat every day, but they love the things of Satan and you love like everything. When you have problems, when you going down in your marriage, when you doing, they the first person you call, but they don't know your God. They don't live by the word of God. So what advice are you getting from them? Come on. So that we got this station, this word. This is what first Corinthians said. This is what I'm going to do because the word of God is going to protect me. It's going to protect these borders. It's going to protect my mind if I obey it. One more. Come on. It says no temptation has overtaken you except something common to mankind. And God is faithful. So he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. Come on, that's hope. Sometimes you really living. You you are walking upright. But just the thought of the things you've done and you say, God, I don't know if I'm strong enough. But God said, uh-uh, uh-uh. That sounds like open. That sounds like a wound right there. That sounds like a place the enemy can get in. We ain't gonna doubt this word. The Bible says no temptation has overtaken you. Uh, overtaken you accept something common to man and God is faithful he listen he ain't tempting you but he said I'll provide you a way of escape so you have hope so you begin to say God as I'm doing my part I believe you're gonna do your part I have hope tests might come but as long as I'm being found in this word I'm gonna pass it come on y'all that's how you station the word of God. One more. You. How do we keep a posture of peace? Y'all, we got to put, like Nehemiah said, we got to put this word at the vulnerable places. What are you going through? Guess what? Maybe you're in a vulnerable place in your marriage. Maybe you saying, look, Latrice, you don't know what he did to me. You don't know what she did to me. That infidelity. Maybe they done went out and did some things and you're embarrassed. You're mortified. You're dealing with hurt or abusive words or whatever. It's just a rough patch in your marriage. Maybe it's not even that extreme. And you said, I hate them right now. The hurt that they've caused me, I hate them. Oh, that sounds like vulnerability to me. 
That sounds like an open wound. Get ready. That sounds like a place that the enemy can get in. Because guess what he wants? You got to station his word. Because that's an attack for bitterness. That's an attack for unforgiveness. That's an attack, y'all. So come on. What do we do? We got to station the word. Well, number one, here's what the word says. Anyone who hates Another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. Y'all, that's a whole eye opener. Let's take the word hate right on out your mouth. That's 1 John 3 and 15, New Living Translation. Guess what? Mark 11, 25 says, but when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your father in heaven will forgive your sins. In other words, when you saying, Lord, I'm so hurt. He done went out on me or she done did such and such. And I need you to da 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 da. And I ain't ever, I can't forgive them for that. He like, yeah, right there. I can't do nothing. He said, you, your prayer stop. So you got to station that word because you can't even get the help, the healing, the wholeness you need. You can't even let the potter put you back together. He can't even begin to do his work because where unforgiveness, he said, you going to need something from me. So you got to give, you have to forgive so that you can get what you need. Okay. Listen, one more love. I ain't loving them. Oh, hold on. This is what 1 Corinthians 13, 14 through 4 through 7 says. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its way. It's not irritable. Oh, Lord. Come on, y'all. And it keeps no record of being wrong. That, that, that's what the word says. This ain't Latrice. It says it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never lose faith, is always hopeful. But then if you want to take a step further, here's what Jesus said in Matthew 22, 37 through 39. He replied, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Listen, I'm talking about station in the word because here's the reality. The enemy was mad at the work that Nehemiah was doing. Just like the enemy is mad at the work that your marriage is going to do. He's mad at the work that your husband has to do. He's mad at the work you have to do. So y'all, we have to be alert. We have to be wise. He's coming to rob, kill, steal, destroy. He wants to take. He is not after. He's after killing. But if he can't do that, he'll rob you of your peace. He'll rob you of your purpose by having you stagnated in guilt and in heaviness. He'll rob you by having you in bitterness, knowing you can't get anything from God because you have unforgiveness in your heart. Come on. He's after. I can't take her out. Well, let me keep her stagnated because if she can't move in purpose, nothing still ain't getting done. Come on, y'all. So a posture of peace free from disturbance, we got to take the word of God and station it. Put that thing, what's vulnerable? And if nothing ain't vulnerable right now, you're like, hey, I'm good. You better go back to what I said because your time coming. Frame your world in the word of God. You know how you build the house. That framing is important. That support system, you better get in the word and start framing so that when the, the, the life hits, you have a support. That word can begin to pull up, y'all. So I just want to encourage you today, no matter what you're going through, I stand encouraged. I hope you stand encouraged because we can live in a posture of peace, free from disturbance. There is rest. I love in Joshua. It says in one part that I'm going to have rest and the land. That thing caught me. I said, hold on. I'm going to get the, the promise and I'm going to rest with it. We, we can live in posture uh, in a posture of peace, but we have to do something. It matters what we fix our mind on. As Nehemiah said, put your mind on the master, not on the mess that's going on. Put him on the one that can do something. Put that word. Say, God, I'm hurt right now. But you said in your word that you would never leave me nor or forsake me. You said in Deuteronomy, do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will not abandon you. That's what you said. So though I feel abandoned, I'm putting that word there to know that what you said, you mean you are reliable. You are God that not that will not lie. You going through financial situations? 
Lord, you said that you would supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Come on. He said in Matthew, if the wildflowers, think about that. If they are here today and gone tomorrow, will I not certainly take care of you? Put that word there. I know what the account says, but you got to station the word so it can guard so that the enemy can come in and try to move you off your peace. Because then here's the other part. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That person can't get nothing from me anyway. So which one are you going to do? you either going to believe my word or not. So y'all, that is my Mindset Monday. I want to encourage you. And I pray that you are decreeing and declaring today too. That we will live and walk in a posture of peace, free from disturbance. But we got to know that requires us to do something Every day, the enemy waiting on that one day that you like, man, it's been good. All right. It's been a year. It's been a year. And then, you know, you like, I, I, I ain't got to read the word as much. You know, God has been blessing. I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to take a little time off. That's what, that's what he waiting on right now. Remember, I say this all the time, it's quality over quantity. It's not about the two and the five hours. Those are good. Please get those time. We need time to study God's word, but I don't care if you got to put it on the car. If it's a, I got in my notes on my um, iPhone, I have scripture for the season. There's five that I'm working on memorizing right now, inside and out. I'm talking about, I don't care if I'm going to the bathroom, fixing lunch. I need to be able to say it because they, those scriptures are taking me through this season. It's just a simple thing. But either way, I'm like, oh yeah, I see what you're trying to do in me. I'm going to station this word here. So I pray I said something to encourage you. Listen, come on. Let's fix our mind on what God says, knowing that he is faithful. Love you. See you next Monday. Bye.